Good morning, First Unitarian. I'm your Religious Exploration Director, Erin Kenworthy, and I'm coming to you from my basement playroom. Last summer, I was in the basement of the church sanding down wall patches in our youth rooms alone, and it became very apparent that our Religious Exploration Ministry requires volunteers. I cannot fully express my gratitude to the individuals who have helped us build up our RE world this year and who continue to do so even now when we are physically distanced from one another. Ellen Cahill, Mary Hilkin, Wayne Easter, May Funk, and Sagay Kaufman work with our early childhood children. Thank you. Eddie Carroll, Lena McCain, Matt Davis, Patrick Wharton, Julia Johns, Marilee Bowe, Danica Larson, Jason Kenworthy, and Amelia Dorn all supported our OWL program this year. Thank you. Carol Poole, Lynn Palma, and Jessica Montgomery worked with our elementary age children. Thank you. Jessica Byler, Andrew Nome, Madeline Stein, Barry Osborne worked with our middle school and senior high youth. Thank you so much. Carrie Hobart, Morgan Schaefer, Laura Chambers, Brett Kramer, Eddie Carroll, and Jessica Byler served on the RE team this year. It's been a strange year, and thank you. Jan Dever, Mary Sullivan, and Carl Jonitz provided clarity around the Carolyn Utter Fund. Thank you. Coral Causeway, Stu Ferguson, Tim Murphy, Aaron Bassnett, Kara, Jessica, Mary, and others who helped with painting and assembling furniture for the youth room upgrades last summer. Thank you. Our goal in RE this year was to provide an environment where the participants could be creative and get to know one another better. We leaned away from traditional curriculum and into building relationships. In the youth rooms, we transformed their physical space into places where they could get cozy, play games, and build relationships. In the new classrooms down the hall, we tried to create spaces that invited play, exploration, creativity, and familiarity. Our K-1 classroom received a playhouse with a slide, and our upper elementary class received a Lego lab. In creating these RE spaces at First Unitarian and in my own past, I have found that creating something with or alongside another person alters the way that my mind operates and relates. Perhaps you've experienced this magic when preparing a meal with a friend, or coloring together with a child, or crafting with someone you love, or playing with neighbors, or painting a room and assembling two sectional sofas and four club chairs in the basement of the church. It is the tiny but powerful shift that occurs in your consciousness when your inner focus is distracted enough on a simple task to allow for genuine connection with another individual. There's science behind the phenomenon. It's the state of regulation in the nervous system, the experience of mindfulness that can occur when we engage our nervous systems in activities that end the dysregulation that can manifest as anxiety, defensiveness, overwhelm, irritation, lack of motivation, depression, and helplessness. I didn't have the vocabulary before talking with some of my therapist friends, but I knew that feeling well enough to seek out ways to create it for myself and for others. The Lego Lab concept was inspired by this exact feeling. This building up a world service today was going to be a Lego themed experiment in our sanctuary, inviting our community to collaboratively build a Lego creation together as an extension of what our Lego Lab was meant to be this year. And I promise we'll still do that one in the future. Right now, so many people are torn between making up and making do. Do we reschedule that event? Do we cancel it? My heart is with those graduating seniors like Lita and Zayden and Jasper, who find themselves at the end of their academic and cultural journeys through school and find that the ceremonies and rituals they anticipated to transition them from child to young adult are canceled or altered in our world as it is right now. They are building new ways to mark that passage, to personalize and celebrate it amidst a global pandemic. And I do believe that like them, we are all still called to build together. 
Sifting through social media recently, I came across a photo of actor Terry Crews showing off a Legos Star Wars set that he completed at home during social distancing, and he captioned the photo. He says, Lego teaches me a lot about life. I've learned that we human beings are like, Lego, are like Legos. Just because you are in pieces, does that mean that you are broken? No. You sometimes just have to disassemble and put all the parts back right again, and that takes time. I agree with Terry, and I really do believe that our communities, our human institutions, follow that same logic. Many of us are sitting this morning in our dysregulated nervous systems, and we are not broken. We are called to play and dream and rebuild the world into which we will emerge in the coming weeks and months. There are systems that need to be disassembled or smashed and rebuilt alongside the communities who were harmed or underserved in the world before COVID. We are called to connect with those closest to us, to strengthen our relationships, discard assumptions and expectations that no longer serve us, and radically dream up a better world so that we can build it together. We don't always get an instruction manual like you do in a Lego set. Sometimes you just have to look at what you've got and play around a little bit until your vision starts to materialize. We've got the time and the opportunity. So what do you want to build? Blessings on this coming week. Thank mm -hmm. you.